Hello Bobcats! In this video we will be discussing heat capacity and specific heat. So let's look at heat capacity first. Heat capacity which is represented with the capital C um, is the heat required to raise the temperature of a quantity of substance by one degree Celsius or you can say one Kelvin. Okay, so, um, and so it's, um, the units for heat capacity are since it's the heat required, units are joules per degree Celsius or joules per Kelvin. Now, it, you don't have to do any conversion between this. Well, you do have to do conversion. No, you don't. You don't have to do conversions um, because if you think about it, we're talking about a change in temperature. So if I have zero degrees Celsius and I change it to one degree Celsius, that's just one unit of change. Well, the same thing here, because remember zero is 273 Kelvin, and if I change it to one, the same here, that's gonna be 274 Kelvin. That's still one unit of change. So I can use either one. It depends on which uh, temperature uh, scale I'm using. The other thing we need to know is that heat capacity is an extensive property. And what I mean by that is that it depends on the amount of substance okay so let's think about that for a second if I have 100 mils of water and I have 1000 mils of water It takes more energy to change the, temp the temperature by one degree in 1,000 mils than it does 100 mils. So the 1,000 mils has more heat capacity. So let's look at this. So uh, let's say it takes um, more energy to um, heat 1,000 milliliters of water by one degree Celsius than it does to heat 100 mils of wheat, uh, water, one degree Celsius. Then it does to heat 100 mils. So we would say that the 1,000 mils has more heat capacity than the 100 mils of water. Okay, so it's an extensive property. It depends on the amount. <laughs> and the uh, equation for heat capacity would be C is equal to heat absorbed divided by temperature change or change in temperature okay or you can think of it as remember it's joules per degree Celsius okay now the next thing we're going to look at is called specific heat 
So specific heat, where do I have my, or also known as specific heat capacity, but we usually just say specific heat. So specific heat capacity, um, which we represent with a lowercase c, is the amount amount of heat required to raise temperature of one gram of one gram of substance by one degree Celsius so or one Kelvin so in this case I'm changing one gram so it's the amount of energy to take and change just one gram by one degree Celsius and this means that this specific heat is an intensive property which um, what, what I mean by that whoops intensive property is that it does not depend on the amount of substance okay so specific key is an intensive property and what we're saying here is that every substance has a requires a different amount of heat to raise that substance by uh, one gram of that substance by one degree Celsius and um, the units for uh, specific heat so the units for specific heat are joules over grams times degree Celsius or you can think of it as joules over grams times Kelvin and in some cases you can even think of it as calories over grams degree Celsius okay so but the most common unit to use is this one right here joules over grams per degree Celsius now the um, Another thing we're going to look at is that um, since this is an intensive property, but we also have molar heat capacity. And molar heat capacity um, is when we look at, let me write it down, give me a second. Molar heat capacity. is the same as specific heat capacity but our amounts are different and in this case instead of grams we're going to look at moles so molar heat capacity is the amount of energy or amount of heat uh, required to raise the temperature of one mole instead of one gram it's one mole so sometimes you're gonna to have to use molar mass to convert between grams and moles but it's the amount of temp uh, the amount of heat required to change the temperature of one mole of substance not one gram one mole of substance by one degree Celsius so it is also an intensive property the only the other thing is that the units are just slightly different my units are joules over mole degree Celsius or joules over mole Kelvin. Okay, so, uh, but it's the same thing, but we're going to sp uh, spend most of our time talking about specific heat and less time about molar heat capacity. I just want you to be aware of that. Now, the next thing is, uh, let's look at... Um, 
the, uh, we can use an equation to determine the amount of uh, heat absorbed by a chemical and physical process, and that equation is as follows. So let me find a different colored pen to use here. So the amount of heat absorbed or released, it could be released, heat absorbed or released um, by a chemical process or physical process is the amount of heat absorbed so that's what we're looking at. The amount of heat absorbed or released by a chemical process can be determined by the following equation. Using Q equals MC delta T. So you need to know this equation. Okay, so again, the amount of heat absorbed, which is Q, or released by a chemical or physical process can be determined by using MC delta T. And so we need to make sure we understand each of these variables. Remember Q is equal to heat and it's measured in joules. We know that M is equal to mass measured in grams. We've got C is equal to specific heat and that has units of joules over gram degree Celsius and then you have change in temperature which um, is uh, in units of, we're going to stay with Celsius so change in temp in degree, and so that's going to be in degrees Celsius now just a reminder anytime you see change Remember, change in anything, in this case change in temperature, is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So uh, let's look at a couple of problems using this equation. The first one, would be, let me get these pins out of the way. Let's uh, calculate the specific heat of water if 83.68 joules of heat is required to raise the temperature of to raise the temperature of four grams of water by 5 degrees Celsius. Okay, so uh, here we have Q, we have mass, and we have the change in temperature. So if I write the equation out, we have Q is equal to MC delta T, and I have to isolate, in this case, I have to isolate for C, um, so I'm going to rearrange that so C is equal to uh, Q over M times delta change in temperature delta T. So when I substitute my values in we'll have 83.68 joules 
divided by a mass of 4.000 grams, I'm doing this because I want an answer with four sig figs, times the change in temperature, which is 5.00 degrees Celsius. And when I do that, when I calculate all this, my specific heat <coughs> comes out to be 4.184 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. Now, this is a value you have to memorize because this is the specific heat of water. And that's the only one you have to memorize. I will give you a table of all the other specific heats, but the one for water you have to memorize. <coughs> so make sure you know this one. Star, star, star. Memorize that one. And this is the specific heat of water. Now water has a very high specific heat. And it's a good thing that it does because what specific heat, to understand specific heat or interpret specific heat, um, we need to think of, well, let me say this. Um, substances with higher specific heat um, resist temperature changes more than substance with low specific heat. So let's write that down. Where's my paper? I need a clean sheet of paper. I've got too much paper over here. So substances <clears throat> with higher higher specific heat values resist temperature change Um, more than substance with low specific heat values. Now, water has one of the highest specific heats, heat values. And that's a good thing because that means it can absorb a lot more energy before it changes temperature. So that's why the Earth is at a constant, uh, a relatively constant temperature. I know there's a, a change, like in, you know, if when it's really cold, it can be uh, in negative 30, and when it's really hot, 100. But that's not a big change for a planet. So, um, and the reason that the uh, temperature on Earth is so constant is because all of that heat energy from the sun that is um, being absorbed by the water doesn't the water doesn't change temperature very much uh, for example if I when you go to the beach and uh, sand which is just basically silicon dioxide sand has a specific heat of one one degree one joule per gram degree Celsius and so on a day when the Sun is uh, the the sand and the water is absorbing the same amount of energy from the Sun the sand changes temperature and it gets really hot because it has a low specific heat and the water didn't change very much. It stays cool because it can absorb all that energy and not change temperature. So let's just look at a couple examples of this. So here's some specific heats of specific, um, a couple examples of substances. So specific heat examples. So again, um, that my blue is just about to run out, so I've got to change colors here. So um, water, remember, 
water as a liquid, H2O as a liquid, is 4.184. Now remember, this is in joules over grams degrees Celsius. So 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. We also have to look at the states of matter. So water as a solid would be 2.089 and water as a gas is even a little bit lower, 2.042. Now these are pretty high because if you think about it, uh, the next one that is close to this would be, uh, let's look at, let's say, um, look at nitrogen gas because that's our atmosphere, right? So nitrogen gas has a specific heat value of 1.04. Um, and then if we look at some of the metals, let's look at aluminum. Aluminum, put an equal sign, is equal to 0 0.892. So it has a, a much lower specific heat value. So if I were to um, give an aluminum, a block of aluminum, the same amount of energy that I would give water, the aluminum would, would increase in temperature much more. So aluminum will have a much greater temperature change with the same amount of heat than water would. Um, so there's aluminum. Uh, something. Let's look at something that's familiar. Let, let's talk about gold. Man, gold is really low. It's at 0 0.129. So that's much lower. Um, and then it's, let's just do one more uh, very familiar one. Let's look at iron. Iron has a 0 0.442. So metals have very low specific heats. And that means that when you give, when you apply any kind of heat to them, they will change temperature very quickly and uh, with a, a great deal of change. Uh, whereas water doesn't change much at all. I mean, think about this: uh, water is how many more times uh, that of gold? So the specific heat of water. Is thirty times uh, has, is thirty times greater than that of gold, so it won't change very much compared to what gold will, and it's because of the low specific heat values of metals is why they also conduct heat very well. Now, the last thing we're going to do is just do one more practice problem with specific heat, and then I'll be done with this video. And so the last practice problem, let me find where I put it. I think I left it somewhere. Hang on. Sorry about that. Okay, so in this case, we're going to uh, example. So let's do another example. Calculate the final temperature. The final temperature after one thousand four hundred eighty five joules of energy or heat is added to 16.7 grams of water starting at 23.4 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I'm going to write my variables. Uh, it's the best thing to do so we don't get, we don't lose track. We know that this value right here, that's Q. So Q is equal to 1485 joules. I also need to make sure all my units match. Um, and then this is mass. So we have mass is equal to 16.7 grams um, of water. So it's not given here, but remember I said you had to memorize. So the specific heat of water 
is 4.184 joules over grams degrees Celsius and then starting at 23.4 degrees so that's a, an initial temperature of 23.4 degrees Celsius so we're looking for the final temperature we don't know what that is now the equation that we're going to use remember is Q is equal to M C Delta T now Delta T don't forget remember Delta T is equal to T final minus T initial so if I can find Delta T then I can use it to substitute here because I, also, I already have uh, initial temperature so let's isolate this equation for Delta T so I want to isolate for Delta T here and so what I do is I divide both sides by MC so Delta T is equal to Q over M times C specific heat and I have these values so I'm gonna go um, 1485 joules over the mass which is 16.7 grams times my specific heat of water which is 4.184 joules over grams times degrees Celsius now I'm going to make sure my units all cancel out so when I do that there's a joule on top and a joule on the bottom so joules cancel then I have a grams on top and a grams on bottom and I'm left with a, a degree Celsius but remember a denominator of a denominator is a numerator so my change in temperature is equal to 21.31 degrees Celsius but that's not the answer remember we're going to use this equation right here so don't forget Delta T is equal to T final minus T initial I need to isolate again for T final so that would be adding TI to both sides so T final is Delta T plus T initial and so that's going to be 21.3 whoops degrees Celsius plus what we had over here to start 23.4 degrees Celsius so my final temperature the answer is 44.7 degrees Celsius that's the final temperature and so when you do a problem like this I would make sure you've got all your variables uh, identified and make sure all the units will match because sometimes you've got kilograms sometimes you might even get a uh, kilojoules or calories or Celsius and Kelvin you need to make sure all the units are going to work then you would write the equation here's my equation then substitute or rearrange the equation for, um, to isolate what you're looking for substitute and then if you're doing uh, initial or final temperatures you find the delta T and then substitute into this this equation delta T is equal to final temperature minus initial temperature and that is the end of heat capacity and specific heat